Hey YouTube, I wanted to try making a Tetris game in Scratch and create a little tutorial to go along with it. So we're going to build this Tetris game together and it's going to take a couple of videos, it's not going to happen all at once. But today we want to start out by drawing a Tetris grid onto the Scratch screen. Now it might be tempting when we're creating a project like this to start by creating some costumes. Maybe we could create one for each of the Tetris pieces. But the problem with this is that if we cede control to Scratch, if we allow the Scratch program to do most of our thinking, if we use, for example, the touching blocks uh, when we want to determine whether a, uh, a Tetris piece has touched the ground, uh, we end up making things harder for oursel ourselves later on. It'll start easier if we can make the pieces fall, maybe we could use some clones and things would be nice and easy. But down the line, imagine if we had one costume for each Tetris piece, but then we want to remove a line of pieces along the screen. We want to remove a row that's full. That's actually really hard to do using costumes. And so if we take the easy route in the beginning, it's actually going to make things a lot harder for us down the road. So we're going to do what seems maybe more difficult, and we're going to render the entire stage, the entire uh, Tetris board, using pen blocks, which we get from the pen extension now in Scratch 3.0. And people sometimes look at my pen projects that I create and say, that's crazy, you're doing it the hard way. Why are you doing that? But as we'll see later on, uh, if we can render the entire stage using pen, it's going to be a lot easier down the road. So let's get started. We want to have a grid in our game of Tetris pieces, and we want to draw them on the board. That's how we're going to start. So I think what it makes sense to do is make a list that can be our grid for the entire game. Now I did go and do a little bit of research, and apparently in Tetris, uh, the visible board is 10 columns wide by 20 rows tall, or at least that's what the player can see. But then there's a few extra rows that are invisible off the top of the board. And it seems like that tends to vary between different Tetris implementations. What we're gonna do is make 22 rows of the Tetris grid, but only draw the bottom 20 of them. So let's start by just maybe making a custom block that can reset the grid. We'll just say that. Reset grid, and we'll make it run without screen refresh just to be safe, just to make it nice and fast. So we have our reset grid, and we're going to start by deleting everything in the grid. That'll give us a nice clean slate to work with. And then we want to add in 22 list items, one for each row of the Tetris board. So I'm going to say repeat 22, and then we want to add uh, sort of list items that represent a particular row on the Tetris board. And because it's 10 wide and all of the squares start empty, I'm going to add 10 zeros. So I've got to count this out here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there's 10. Uh, maybe I should double check, but that seems like it's 10 uh, zeros. Yeah. 10 zeros, and when we run this block, if we pull out a reset grid and we click it, you can see that we now have this grid list that's 22 long, and each item has 10 zeros. So we're just going to use zero to represent an empty grid space. So we'll click the green flag, or we'll make it so that that happens when the green flag is clicked, I should say. And the idea is that every time a piece falls, we're going to add the piece information into this board. So imagine that we had a long, you know, a big tall L piece. I think that's what it's called, L or I, whatever the big long one is. That's just a straight line of four. Um, if it were to fall down horizontally, so it's running across the bottom, only this bottom list item would change, and we might replace like four of these zeros with ones if we say that the L, the big long piece, is the first type of Tetris piece. And what we'll do is we'll have different numbers here. There's seven types of Tetris pieces. So zeros will represent empty grid spaces. Ones will be the first type of piece. Two will be the second, and so on, all the way to seven. Um, so once we have this grid, we're going to want to draw it. We're going to be able to want to use pen to draw that grid onto the screen. So I'm going to make another custom block, and I'm going to call it maybe render grid. And again, we want it to run without screen refresh, so it all happens super fast. 
And what I'm thinking is that this will be inside of a forever loop. And this forever loop will sort of be the main loop of our entire game. So over and over again, we want to render this grid. And that'll involve erasing everything on the screen. And then we want to start drawing. So I think maybe it makes sense to start by drawing a border around it. I'll do a, maybe a black pen line going around. So we'll make it black and we'll set the pen size to, I don't know, we'll say two pixels wide. Now we got to figure out the width and height of our board. And I'm going to do this using variables just so that it's easy to change later. We'll say that the uh, grid size, I'm going to say it should be 16 pixels. So right in the beginning, we'll just set our grid size to 16. So every square is going to be 16 by 16 pixels. And I did a little bit of math earlier, and this should sort of make the, make the grid fit nicely on the screen. So uh, we know that our grid size is 16, and the width of our grid is 10 tiles. So it's going to be 160 wide. And if we want it to be centered, then the right side is going to be at 80 pixels, and the left is going to be at negative 80 pixels. So you have a width of 160, because it's 16 times 10 tiles. So I think what we'll do is we will say... Uh, first, we're going to pick the pen up, and then we're going to go to the top left corner. So we'll just go to negative six, uh, yeah, negative, what was it? Negative 80, because we wanted to get to 160 wide. And then the Y is going to be half of 20 times 16. So that would be uh, 180, I think, right? Because if we have uh, 16 times 20 is really 320. And 320 divided by 2, yeah, you're just back. No, you're at 160. That's the number. Okay. Then, actually, you know what? We should be doing this differently. We should be using this grid size variable we just made. So maybe we'll say, let's see, we'll put 10 times the grid size. That can be the total width. Divided by 2 is going to be half the width, and that'll be our x. I guess we're starting on the positive side now. And then the same with the Y. We'll make it be 20 tall times the grid size divided by 2. And we can see the scratch cat go there. Um, yeah, if we click the green flag. Then we're going to put the pen down. And we are starting in the top right. I said we'd start in the top left, but this works too. All right, then um, let's move down. So we'll do instead of 20, we'll do negative 20. And we get a nice line going down. And then... We will change the x to be negative. Yep. And then we will change the y to be positive again. And you can see we're kind of just going around and drawing this grid. I'll actually hide the list real quick so we can see what's going on. And we'll end up moving right back to where we started. There we go. So using our grid size variable of 16, we've got this Tetris board that's 10 by 20. It's twice as tall as it is wide. Uh, and I guess we should pen up at the end, just in case we start moving anywhere else. We can also, I guess, hide the scratch cat. We don't really need him. Um, so there we go. That's nice and easy. We've got our border, but now it's time to start drawing the Tetris pieces. And this is where it gets interesting. I think it makes sense to start by just uh, making a block that will specifically draw one grid on the Tetris board. So what should we call this? Maybe we'll call it Render Tile. And we're going to need a couple of different things. We're going to need the sort of coordinates of this tile on the Tetris board. And I think what I'm going to do is have these coordinates be in terms of like where you would find the grid item in the list. So you'll have X and Y, but these aren't going to be like scratch X and Y coordinates on the screen. They're going to be like if you put one and one in, that would be like the very top left tile of the board. And then the other thing we want is the type of piece. And this will change what color it is based on which shape the falling uh, Tetris piece originally was. And we'll run without screen refresh for this as well. So I think we'll start by just making these tiles be circles, just because that's an easier place to begin. And then later on, we'll go back and make them be squares. So let's see. If we want to draw one of these tiles, we're going to pen up, and we're just going to make a little dot. So we're going to pen up. Go to a particular spot. We'll figure out what it is in a minute. And then we'll just do pen down and back up again. So, whoops, pen down and then pen back up. 
Oh, and we need to set our pen size. We're going to want the diameter of the pen, the diameter of the circle that we draw, to be the same as the grid size. We want it to be 16, because that's going to be, it's going to fill in one grid space if we do that. Okay, now we got to figure out the coordinates. So we got to find what would the on screen coordinates be at the center of a particular tile. So I guess maybe we start in the top left corner. So we say start with, where would the top left be? Well, the left edge is here. That's the x coordinate of the left. Remember, that's exactly what we use to draw this corner. Oh, wait, no, that's the right. There's the left. That's right here. And so we're going to start with that, and then we'll add some amount, I think. Now, the amount that we want to add is a little bit tricky. We're going to say that an x of 1 means it's like the very left column of tiles. Um, and the reason we're using 1 rather than 0 is because when we're dealing with the grid list, we want to be able to say like letter 1 of item 1 of the grid is going to be that 0 that represents that top left tile. So that's why we're starting at 1 and 1 on x and y. So what we really want to do is take the x coordinate and I guess subtract 1 to make it sort of start counting from 0 and then multiply that by the uh, grid size. So it'll be six, it'll go over by 16 pixels every time the x goes up by 1. Now I don't think that's quite right, um, but we'll start there. I think this one will have to change to a, a half instead, but we'll deal with that in a minute. Then we want to do kind of the same thing for the y. Um, we want to start at, I guess, a y of positive 20, and then we want to go down. We want to go negative 16 every time the y increases by 1. So we're actually going to have to take this grid size and make it negative. So we'll just say take the grid size, multiply it by negative 1. All right, so if we do this, let's try doing a tile at uh, 1, 1, the top left, and the type doesn't matter yet because we don't use it. All right, if I click that, there we go. So we got a tile, and it's in the corner. And this is where I was talking about the, the minus 1. Here, actually, just for reference, we'll draw a couple more. If we do an x of 2, y of 2, there you go. So you can see it's kind of working. It's just offset by, like, half a space to the left. And the reason is that when we subtracted 1, we were sort of saying this top left piece, if you're at 1, 1, that coordinate, this very top left uh, space, is going to end up being 0 times the grid size, which means your position ends up just being at the very top left corner. And what we really want to do is shift everything right by half a tile and down by half a tile because we care about the center of the tile rather than the top left corner of it, uh, just because that's how the circle drawing works with pen and scratch. So we're going to change each of these to subtracting a half, and we'll click the green flag to clear everything. And now if we render a tile at 1, 1, there we go. Now it's in the top left, and it kind of looks like everything is where we want it to be. Just as a quick sanity check, what happens if we draw one at a y of 20, x of 10? That should give us the bottom right corner. Yeah, that's beautiful. Okay, so it looks like everything is working how we want it to. Obviously, we're eventually going to want to make these be squares rather than circles, but for now, this will do. Um, and it's probably time that we start actually using the grid list that we created. We initially made this list to, to sort of sh represent the data behind the grid that we want to draw. So we should probably actually use the values in this list to draw the grid. Right now they're all zeros though. So I think just for testing purposes only, maybe we will replace item 1 in the grid with, rather than being all zeros, we can put like a put ones in the corner, maybe. And I'll go every other for a minute here. We'll make a nice little pattern. There we go. So that's, if we run this now, we reset the grid, and you can see we've got, this is obviously not a pattern that would ever appear in real Tetris, um, but we've got some ones up here, and we just want to draw those ones in as filled spaces on the grid. So let's think about doing that real quickly. I'm going to make this a little smaller so we can see our entire board. Um, how would we go about doing this? Well, we want to sort of have like a loop that goes through every single list item, and then inside each list item goes through every single uh, sort of letter going across. 
So I'm going to make two variables here that we can use to just count. And I'm going to have x and y. And I'll make them both be for this sprite only. It doesn't really matter because we're not going to have a lot of sprites in this game. But it's possible that we could have another sprite someday that wants to use x and y just because those are common names. So we're going to render this grid and we're going to start, I think, by counting the y up. So the y is going to start at 1, the very first grid item. And we're going to repeat how many times? 22. We could plug in the length of the list rather than typing 22 in manually, but it doesn't really matter because we're never going to change this grid size. And if we did, we could go back and change our code. I think it's a little clearer if we just type the number in ourselves. So here we'll change y by 1. And now, whatever we put, I'm just going to put a, a, a dummy block in here, whatever we put in this space where I've put the if on edge bounce, uh, this is going to get sort of that Y counter going from 1 all the way up to 22. And then uh, each time that we get a Y, each time that we're looking at a particular grid item, a particular row, we also want to look at every uh, column, every item in that row. So we're going to do another very similar counter, but for X. We're going to say take the X, start it at 1, and we're going to repeat 10 times because there are... 10 different columns, and again we'll change x by 1. And we're going to put this inside of the existing loop, which means that now, I'll use a dummy block again to show the position, in this position right here, uh, whatever code we put there in place of the blue block, um, that code will be run once for every single uh, combination of x and y on the entire board. We'll get sort of looping through every single grid space. So. Uh, what we want to put in there is just a little render tile. We just want to say uh, render a tile at the particular x and y. Now getting what are the x and y, that's really easy. We just plug in the x and the y that we're looping through, although you do have to put them in the right spots. And then the type, um, well that's going to depend on the actual value inside this grid list. So we're going to take item y of grid, because the y again is which row we're on, and then we're going to get just a particular letter of that grid item. So we're going to say letter X of item Y of the grid list. And that's going to say at a particular X and Y coordinate, is this a 0, is this a 1, or in the future it might be something else. And then in the render tile, for now, I guess we'll just sort of make it a true-false thing. It's either a 0 or a 1, and so we'll just say if the type happens to be a 1, then we'll draw the tile. If not, we just won't do anything. In the future, we'll have more different types, but we'll deal with that later. So, nothing worked. Oh, because I didn't attach it. Boop! There we go. And look at that! We've got this grid. Whatever we type into this grid is being rendered onto the screen. So, we can even edit this live. Maybe we want to change this bottom row to be... Let's see, we'll do five ones, four zeros, and then another one. And, oh, it went too far down, but that's okay. That's actually pretty normal because, again, remember that in the Tetris rules, I can actually pull this up here. In the Tetris rules, uh, you want to have only uh, 20 rows that are shown and the rest are hidden. Um, so we're doing that here. We have two rows out of our 22 are off the bottom of the screen. Um, but that's, that's a fixable problem. So actually, what let's do instead of, of looping over all 22 rows, let's start at row 3 and then only loop over 20 of them. Um, oh, and then here we have to take the Y and actually subtract 2.5 to shift it up. Yes. Okay, so there now the top two rows aren't being rendered. You can see we've got uh, this row and this row. This row actually has some stuff, but it's not showing up because we hid those top two rows, which is good. That's what we want. Now, this row, number three, will be our new top row. So, let's see. I'm going to do another. I lost count. Let's see. We got, is that five? That looks like five. Yeah. And there you go. So, that one renders as our top one now. Number one and two don't render at all. 22 renders as the bottom row. All right. I'm feeling pretty good about this. I think the last thing we want to do before wrapping up this first bit... Oh, wait, there's two parts that we want to do. One is we want to change the colors so that you can have more than just black and white. And then we also want to make them be square. Now, I've got to knock at the door. I'll be right back.
All right, I'm back. Believe it or not, it was not someone trying to sell me something. Um, so we've got two, two problems left still. We want to change the color of these tiles, and we want to make them squares. I think first, let's do the color part, just because that's more fun, and it'll make our squares look a little bit exciting. So we're going to take this type, and rather than just having one type, uh, we want to have one through seven, as I said before. And I'm pretty sure there's a page on here. Aha, this tells us all the colors that we want. So we're just going to go in order and say cyan. Uh, this I piece is going to be type 1. The yellow O is going to be type 2, and so on. So I think the easiest way to do this is honestly just going to be a, a list of if statements. It doesn't look super pretty when you write the code out like this, but it'll work. So we say if type is 1, that's cyan, right? Yeah, if type is 1, we're going to set the pen color to be cyan. So we got to go down to pen, set the pen color, and I'm just going to kind of eyeball this here. In the future, we might go back and, uh, I don't know, choose slightly nicer colors. But for now, say eh, something like that will be fine. Um, and then we duplicate this. Duplicate is still the best feature in Scratch. I'm pretty sure this was yellow. Let's check. Yeah, type 2 is going to be yellow. Maybe I should fast forward this. I don't know. It's kind of fun, though. If you're following along, you can be choosing colors yourself. Type 3 is going to be what color? What color is type 3? Purple. That's E piece. That's fun. What color is purple? There we go. Type 4 is going to be green. We can do green. A lot of green options. It's not the one that like, the human eye can see the most of. I'm pretty sure that's the thing. All right, that's green enough for me. Type 5 is going to be what color? Type 5 is going to be red. Red, right there. Type 6. Whoops. Don't want to inside each other. Type 6 is going to be blue. Sorry if this is getting a little bit tedious. I might in the video skip through it. I'm not sure. Depends on how willing I am to edit. Last color is orange. So type 7 will be orange. Wow, not a lot of orange options. Uh, it's like the opposite of green. All right, whatever. That's orange enough for me. So there we go. We've got our different pen colors, and we'll just put it right after the pen size. That'll be fine. Okay, so all of our type 1s have become cyan. Just to quickly test all these colors, I think what it makes sense to do is replace item three, it's gotta be, with a count. We'll just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we need eight, nine, ten. We'll just fill those last three in with zeros. Um, okay, that didn't work how I thought it would. Oh, because we still have this if type equals one. We're only rendering if type equals one. Instead, we wanna say render any time that the type is not equal to zero. If it's zero, it should still be empty. But if it's not zero, there we go. Render in the colors. And there they all are They all are in order. One through seven are different types. And the last thing to do in this video is to make them be squares instead of circles. Now, Griff Patch had a pretty interesting project for this. I don't have it open right now, but he kind of showed a fast way of drawing squares, and it seems pretty straightforward. Um, Unfortunately, it does involve a bit of math. Essentially, what we want to do is put this circle, keep this circle how it is, but then also get a thinner pen line and draw a square around the edges. And there's a little bit of trigonometry to figure out exactly the right size. And I did it before, and it was like 3 point, uh, I want to say 3.31, although it was a while ago that I did the math, so I'm not sure. But I definitely know that it rounded up to 4 pixels. So we're going to say, after we draw this big dot, um, set the pen size to be four pixels wide. And then we want to go around and draw this square. Now, remember that pen always sort of works at the center, so we can't go from the top left edge to the top right to the bottom right to the bottom left and back again, because that would actually end up being uh, two pixels, the radius of the circle, wider on each side. So we'd end up with actually a 20 by 20 pixel square. So we actually have to go in a little bit. Um, it's a little bit tricky to explain in words, but essentially we want to take our current position, and we could do the math over and over again. I think actually what makes more sense is maybe if we just start in the center and then change our x. So we want to say, hey, rather than being in the center, um, move over to the left edge. So basically move over by the grid size divided by 2. And we'll actually make it negative 2, so we go left. Change the x by that, and that would put us at the left edge. 
But then we want to counterbalance that a little bit by moving to the right too, which is the radius of this circle. Now again, it's a little tricky to talk about in words, but essentially we're just making sure that the edges of our circle line up exactly where they want them to be. So this is going to put us on the left, and then this is going to put us on the top. If we want to do that, we've got to make this positive. Uh, oh, and then we have to subtract 2. We could do plus negative 2, but I actually like using the correct subtraction block. All right, there we go. So that's going to put us in the right spot. And then we can put our pen back down. And then we just got to move around the circle. So we want to, we started in the top left. We want to move to the right. And the exact amount that we do it is going to be the grid size minus 4. Now, I kind of think of this as like the grid size minus the pen radius times 2. But of course, the radius times 2 is just the diameter, which is 4. Um, again, a little tricky to visualize, but that's essentially what we're doing. All right, then we want to change the y by the same... We want to move the same distance, but we want to move down, which I guess means actually that we need to go negative. I'm just going to put a negative 1 times that. We could, I guess, do 4 minus the grid size, but I kind of think this is clearer. All right, then we want to do the same thing. We want to change the x negative, so we're moving back to the left. We first moved right, then down. Now back left, and then up. And as you can see, we're kind of making some nice looking squares here. I feel like that works. We've got our squares in place, and I guess I'll pen up at the end, just in case we ever move somewhere new. But that pretty much does it. We've got our grid, and we're rendering it. Later on, we'll be able to add some different code that changes the items in this grid, but uh, it pretty much does what we want. I can type in uh, different, different grid items, and it'll give us the right rendering on the screen. So next up, we'll be adding some falling pieces, I think, um, and then we'll go from there. It'll be interesting.